is a pretty good echo. All right. So first question, what's with all the tripods, Ben? Well, I've come to Balkan Viaduct because I felt like I needed to do a recce because I've not been here for absolutely years and I intend on making a video about it. But whilst I wait for the light to be in the right position, let me tell you why I'm carrying two tripods. Now, this is the Suray ST124, which I made a review of last year. And this is the tripod that I've been using exclusively for landscape photography, probably for the last nine months. And Suray got in touch and they said, Ben, how would you like to do a review of the upgrade? Now, personally, I've got no issues with this at all. It does everything I need it to. But of course, I was intrigued to see how they could possibly improve upon this. By the time this video comes out, which will be about mid-July 2022, they would have released the upgrade to this, which is the ST224. Now, if you put them side by side, you might say, Ben, that looks like exactly the same tripod. But essentially, everything has been upgraded by about 20%. Now, if you were to look at both of these tripods side by side and ignoring the ball heads that are on them, there's about 50 millimeter difference. So there's not much in it before you actually put them together. So let me stand these up. Both of these models have four sections to their legs and they're both carbon fiber. So that makes no difference. Although the weight has gone up from the 124 being 1.2 kilograms and the new one, the 224 is now 1.4 kilograms. So like I said, roughly 20% on everything so there you go with that center column a little bit of a difference and then we'll extend up the center column should you wish to use the center column that's above my head there and then the new version as a train goes over our heads this can be quite a busy location there's a drone behind me there are some people taking pictures in front of me and then the occasional train comes over the top i've picked easier locations to shoot videos <laughs> Now that's way too high for me, but if you were really tall or if you were to be shooting on a very steep hillside, having such a tall tripod does actually come in handy. So if you are looking for a really tall tripod, then the 224 goes way above your head and you'd have to have some sort of flip screen so you could actually see how your composition is working. Now, if you watch my original review of the ST124 about nine months ago, and if you were to ask me today, have I got any complaints with it? I would say absolutely not. I'm really happy with this. But if for some strange reason you felt like this wasn't tall enough, or if 12 kilograms was not enough capacity, then I want you to let me know in the comments below. Please tell me which camera and lens combination you're using that is above 12 kilograms, please, because I'm just intrigued. My heaviest camera is a Canon 5D Mark III, and my heaviest lens is 100 to 400. Now the lens is one and a half kilograms and the camera is about one kilogram. So that's two and a half kilograms. I'm definitely in favor of buying something where there's a bit of bunts. So you could say, I know that I've got a heavy camera lens, but I know that my tripod will hold a bit more. But six times the amount seems a bit excessive, but I'll take it. Realistically, if you already own this, you definitely don't need to upgrade to this. If you're considering which one of these two you should buy, then this one, the 124 is $340, and the new one, the ST224, is coming out at $400. But they sell the 124 with the 10X ball head, whereas the ball head that comes with the 224, which is called the ST20, has a lot more features on it. It allows you to pan at the bottom, and it also allows you to pan at the top, and this is just another solid ball head. So if you don't own either of these, and you're thinking, which one should I get? If it was me, I'd probably spend the extra $60 and I would get the new version once it becomes available in around mid-July 2022. It looks like we're not far off sunset, so let's go and take some photos. Okay, first of all, if you are going to come to Balkan Viaduct, it's the middle of summer right now, so I'm choosing to do this at sunset. So this is only based upon sunset. But the good thing is, it's really easy to get to. I'll put the what three words location to where you park up. Probably about 10 parking spaces just off the road over there. There's about 50 to 100 metre walk along a public footpath and then bam, you're at the viaduct. And there's obviously plenty to photograph inside the viaduct itself, other than a few warnings saying, careful of falling bricks and there's a bit of water dropping off the ceiling. I mean, you could spend a long time here. A lot of people come here to take some really nice portraits inside the arches and uh, yeah, it's a really nice location, but Specifically, I'm after some landscape photography, so I'm just going to follow this footpath down and then see where that leads to. Okay, th this is where I used to come, but obviously they've had enough of photographers to put the sign up. Now, it might come across like I've staged this, but 
things seem to be a lot more strict here now than they used to be. I used to literally just walk across that field. There was no barbed wire, there was no trespassing fences. Carefully just walk around the field and then position myself in the corner of the opposite field, which has got a great view of this. This seems to be the best location for that view legally without trespassing. But I need a really tall tripod to get over this hedge. I know it sounds suspicious, but here you go. I just coincidentally picked a place where you need a really tall tripod. So let's see if I can get a shot. I have lost the sunlight, but like I said, this is a recce. And now when I do come back, I know exactly where I should be. This location is literally ruined if you want to be on the right side of the law. Oh dear, what to do? Oh, I'm crossing my arms because I'm mad. This might actually be one of the only videos I make where I do a recce and I don't even bother returning because I can't find a composition of the actual viaduct that I'm happy with. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, that was close. I seem to have just tripped and fell over that hedge and I've just landed in the field with a great vantage point. Wow, that was really, really lucky. I can't believe that happened. Okay, so you're not allowed in here, but whilst I just tripped and fell in here, I might as well show you what the view looks like. I'll get out of the way of the shot so that you can see the full glory of Balkan Viaduct. Okay, so at the moment, this is 24 millimeters and I'll give you a quick pad around. Okay. So this is the hedge that I just tripped and fell over. It's a really dangerous hedge. If you come here, you need to be careful of that. And then I'll just pan around here and you can see the full glory of the viaduct. This is the composition that you would have seen so many times. However, you're not technically allowed in here anymore. So be careful, especially this trip hazard that is the hedge, okay? Now, I will share with you some images that I've taken from this composition over the years. Um, but if you do see some photographs from me from this location, they were definitely taken at least five years ago, okay? If you are interested in either of those tripods, I'll put a link in the description. I don't get any commission. However, they have given them to me, but I can honestly say that they are really awesome tripods and I highly recommend them. Oh, and don't forget, put your heaviest lens and camera combination in the comments below and whoever has the heaviest wins my respect. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.